Welcome back. After a record-setting week last week, the markets are consolidating but holding on to that 23,000 mark and it started inching up. So when we started the show at 11, we were at 23,000 and now we've added on close to about 18 points. Uh, the action in the mid-cap space continues. The mid-cap index is still up close to about 0.7%. Uh, Some of these IT stocks are seeing, you know, gaining ground. So Infosys, LTI, Mindtree. Uh, are some of the stocks where those incremental gains have come through. Madan Gopal Ramu, fund manager and head of equities at Sundaram Alternate Assets, is now joining in. Uh, so, uh, you know, Madanlal, it's uh, the last leg of what's been a long, dramatic, uh, you know, election uh, voting period. Uh, you know, we're at the crucial juncture now, and lots of scenarios are being built in the market. But how do you <laughs> position your portfolio broadly now, in anticipation of the verdict? Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, I, I think uh, the narrative of the government coming back and uh, uh, the investment uh, narrative that has been going on, I, I think that has gone to a next uh, level at this point of time. Uh, we feel that a lot of uh, the growth potential, and it will continue, I think, uh, depending upon what is the results. Uh, I think India investment story is likely to continue, but a lot of it seems to have been uh, factored in the prices at this point of time. Uh, particularly if you look at capital goods and uh, PSUs, which are the major beneficiaries of this, uh, we feel that the next three to four years of growth in some of these companies are already factored. And many of these benefited, particularly in capital goods, from the margin perspective because of the commodity tailwind, which is now getting away. So we have to be very selective from here to be, uh, say, overweight on this space. We have to be very much stock selective. On the other side, market is going to search for new winners. So in that attempt, I think uh, there will always come a scenario where you will see uh, IT sector, which has underperformed, getting some momentum for a short period. But it will all depend on how they can deliver on earnings, which is still a question mark given what is happening globally. And uh, banks, uh, again, an underperformed sector will also try to uh, see if, it, if there can, can be any winners there. So broadly, market is searching for some new winners post-election. I think this is what uh, the market would be doing and uh, uh, lack of uh, triggers will keep the market uh, uh, in a very short band. Uh, don't see downside risk and neither see upside risk for uh, upside uh, potential for Nifty. Uh, we uh, remain a stock selective uh, sort of an approach will work and uh, we continue to do that. Uh, in terms of stock selection, uh, Exide and Senco are two stocks that you're betting on. You've recently initiated coverage in two of your portfolios. Can you talk about uh, the rationale behind Exide and even Senco Gold? Why you pick these two? Yeah, first on uh, the uh, energy, uh, there, there is a large transition that is happening in two sectors, right? Uh, India's case is different from other countries uh, uh, where we are seeing a uh, Demand for energy as well as transition to meet the clean energy target is also happening. Uh, while the demand for energy is covered from our capital goods allocation that we have in uh, some of the companies, uh, the mobility energy transition is a large opportunity is what we feel. Uh, right now, we are talking about uh, uh, India's demand of around 20 gigawatt, including electric vehicles, uh, battery storage, and all these areas. Uh, but this going up to as high as even 100 gigawatt, and government has committed that we will stay put with the electric vehicle. And given the uh, energy demand, there is also another leg of uh, battery, uh, lithium and battery demand coming from the battery storage as well. Uh, and we are also talking about power deficit scenario, uh, which can also lead to some more higher demand. So overall, this put together, we feel uh, India's uh, battery, lithium and battery demand can go up substantially from the current levels over the next, uh, next five years or so. And uh, if you look at uh, a company that, that you mentioned has been always focused on the lead asset. Uh, is, is now getting into and starting to invest into the uh, lithium and battery side. They have tied up with the Chinese uh, manufacturer on this, and they've got some recent orders also from a domestic uh, 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 the MNC company with the domestic manufacturing. Uh, so we we feel a very big opportunity coming up in this space. We call it as an energy transition opportunity, and uh, I think these are very good uh, ideas that you can bet on from a little long term perspective. Uh, so that is on 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 the on the uh, excite that you talked about. Uh, overall, we have been very bullish on retail, uh, and within retail, uh, gold is an area where we have made a lot of money over last uh, last seven eight year time period by, by being in uh, Titan. Uh, we feel that another idea in this space can also make a lot of sense. 
given a year where people are looking uh, for opportunities to balance the risk and move out of equities, a lot of in interest is there in the gold. Uh, a rate cut scenario can uh, actually lead gold to perform further. Within that, if you choose a retail gold company, uh, a, a retailer who is in the gold uh, jewelry business and who has a plan to expand its presence, uh, then you make uh, more returns than actually investing in the gold itself. That's the point that I keep making for so many years. That in interest, uh, instead of investing in gold, if you had invested in Titan, you would have made almost three, four times higher returns. So I think uh, that is, again, we are trying to expand it by one more idea, uh, given that we have a positive view on gold as well as the uh, retailer, retaining of gold. Uh, so, so Madan, just the... just uh, Madan, just allow me to come in over here. I have just a curious question. Completely understand that narrative and Titan has been such a wealth creator, right? And some of the other smaller jewelers, they've been reporting very strong growth as well. So my, my thought was that uh, why Senko and say, why not a Kalyan? Kalyan has also been reporting very strong numbers. So what are the metrics that are key to you, which, which is why obviously you've selected Senko? Obviously, the growth numbers are very similar for most of these companies at this point because mm. all of them are expanding at this point. Uh, margin wise, you don't see much difference between a Kalyan or a, a Senko or even uh, to that extent, uh, some of the other retailers also. But if you look at Titan, it will be in a different zone. So Titan will always be our uh, uh, our major allocation uh, in terms of our allocation. A major major allocation will be there in Titan. But if you look at uh, Senko uh, valuation wise, it gives you a lot of comfort when you are getting in at this point of time. Got it. Uh, so got that it, got is one it. Okay, so, you know, just very quickly, we're a little short on time. I want to squeeze in uh, your thoughts on two more stocks, which really are very interesting in terms of recent additions. One is GETND. Now, we all know Q4 has been a bumper quarter for a lot of, especially MNC uh, companies in the industrial segment, right? So, just tell us what you're seeing in GETND and valuations over there. And the other interesting uh, aspect is that you are, uh, you know, exiting MCX, but you're adding Angel 1. Now, Angel One has already had a huge rally, and there's a debate about whether the pace of uh, you know new users, whether that is kind of you know plateauing out or not. So, just uh, some thoughts there as well. These two stocks, GETND and uh, Angel One. First on uh, uh, the uh, the first question that was asked on Excite, I mentioned about the energy transition, right? That is India seeing uh, India seeing both energy demand as well as uh, we are seeing a commitment to the clean energy, which will uh, lead to investment per unit of energy being much, much higher than the previous cycle. Uh, to put it another way, as a country, we will burn coal in the evening to meet the peak demand. In the daytime, we will have solar energy. So the amount of uh, investment required to meet the same amount of uh, demand in the, electric, in the power sector will be much higher than what it was in the last cycle. Therefore, uh, the megawatt capacity addition to meet the same energy demand is going to increase. The transmission requirement to get it to the consumer is also going to increase multiple. So this is going to be much different from the last electric uh, power cycle that we have seen. Therefore, we see next four or five years, a large demand coming for transmission capacity addition also. So that is the reason to have a GETD and uh, valuation wise, it, these are not going to be cheap, uh, but I think they will have a lot of early cycle benefit of getting a huge swing in order inflow uh, for the next two, three years, given that what I mentioned, that there will be a large amount of capacity requirement to meet both the energy demand as well as the clean energy uh, targets and commitments that we have uh, that we have as a country. Uh, this is on that. And uh, Angel One is actually we have added in some of the small portfolios. Uh, this is uh, primarily to de risk from, on, uh, uh, from, from the benchmark perspective. But uh, broadly, yeah, uh, we feel that the small gaps will still have some more legs to. Uh, move up and some of these steps, uh, stocks which can benefit from that uh, and also available at a low valuation is something which some allocation has been done. Uh, but that is in, in some of our smaller portfolios. But uh, as you asked, uh, GTD is something which we have added across portfolios as a long-term call that we have taken on that idea. Thank you very much uh, for joining in. Records are being piled on. The markets are rallying and rallying hard. It's now a 100-point rally on the Nifty. The Sensex has scaled up nearly 450 points. And look at the way uh, l and has moved up. l and is now up close to about 1.5%. Uh, Axis Bank is seeing uh, you know, a big spike up. And IT continues to provide that support for the market. Titan is another big mover. It's up close to about a half a percent. But most of the gains, it's been inching up as the day's uh, progress. So this is turning out to be not a quiet session anymore. It's rallying and rallying hard. The Nifty Bank, too, is up nearly 1%. With that, we're going to take your leave on Trading R from the entire team. Thank you for watching.